Greetings, esteemed visitor. I am Inquisitorial Librarian Mandunus Manustus, a custodian of the Great Library of Terror in the 41st millennia. Within these sacred halls, the knowledge of the Imperium of Man is preserved, safeguarded and accessed by those deemed worthy. It is my duty to maintain the sanctity of these tomes and guide seekers of truth through the labyrinthine depths of our collective history. Today, the archivists have sought to trust this knowledge upon you. So, listen closely. Esteemed brethren, today we embark on a journey into the depths of Necron lore, for within their shadowy annals lies the enigmatic figure known as the Silent King. In the darkest recesses of ancient history, before the Necrons' descent into immortality, the Silent King, Zarek, stood as the ruler of the Necron Tear. A figure shrouded in mystery and authority, his reign bore witness to both glory and tragedy. Under the Silent King's rule, the Necrons reached the pinnacle of their civilization. Vast interstellar domains sprawled across the galaxy, their technological marvels unmatched by any other race. The Silent King, an epitome of regal presence and calculated wisdom, guided his subjects with a firm hand. However, as the Necrontier's bitterness toward the immortal Old Ones grew, the Silent King embarked upon a fateful course of action. He forged an unholy alliance with the malevolent Catan, the star gods whose hunger for life essence knew no bounds. In doing so, he damned his own people to an eternity of soulless existence. Soon, the Silent King realized the treachery of the Catan, as his people were consumed by the soul-harvesting rituals. Consumed by guilt and remorse, he sought to rectify his grave mistake, vowing to free his people from the clutches of the Catan and restore their lost flesh and souls. Brethren, the Silent King's tale is one of tragedy and redemption. If one could ever feel pity for a Zeno, it is for a ruler burdened by the weight of his choices. His quest for redemption would shape the destiny of the Necrons and humanity, forever altering their path and setting in motion a series of events that would reshape the galaxy. But the Silent King's journey was not without sacrifice. As the Necrons established their dominion over the galaxy, the Silent King decided to enter a self-imposed exile, while his people entered the Great Sleep. In this dormant state, he entrusted the governance and protection of his empire to his Triarch Praetorians, as he embarked on a quest to find a way to reverse the effects of the biotransference. In his exile, into deep space, such unspeakable things did he witness as cannot be adequately articulated in any language. The worst of these beings were the Tehranid. It cannot be said what else he saw in his travels. But I suspect he realized the scope of the threat when he saw the tendrils of the Hive fleets encircling our galaxy. Zarek, returning to our space after nearly 60 million years of exile. His mission clear, his purpose righteous. With measured steps, he initiated the Great Awakening, stirring his slumbering subjects from their death-like slumber to reclaim their lost heritage. Across the galaxy, the Silent King led his legions, liberating tomb worlds but also finding his people in ruin. Dormancy led the Necron race to waste away. Their tombs, buried below Imperial Hive cities, or opened and looted by the red-robed priests of Mars. Tomb worlds that had awakened were fractious, the awoken lords of the Necron repeated their petty squabbles of old. His elite soldiers, the Triarch Praetorians, returned to his service, their oaths of fealty restored. They travel the galaxy as heralds of their king. Bidding his people to unite, Imperial historians have hypothesized that humanity first encountered the Silent King in all his power within the Zone of Silence, a not insignificant space within the Ultima Segmentum. Is it said that chaos does not go there? through some foul arcane sorcery. Necrons have stopped the taint of the warp, but through this, humanity has been numbed. It is said those within the sector, citizens and soldiers of the Imperium, experience a draining of spirit, their wills to fight or run quelled. In truth, it has been discovered by agents of the Mechanicus that the great Blackstone pylons within the sector have caused the warp to recede. The Indomitus Crusade, fleets in all their glory, protected by the Emperor's might, brought war to the Segmentum. The Imperial advance, however, was halted upon the return of the Silent King. The arrival of the Silent King brought a semblance of unity among the Necron dynasties, his commands and stratagem communicated to all lords. The Triarch Praetorians appeared on the ground in their thousands, 
just as the throne of the Triarch landed. He sent orders to hundreds of thousands of nobles to begin their attack and coordinated their war efforts. Our guard and space marines held the ground, but were overwhelmed by ceaseless metallic waves. And those that fled fared no better, as their failing warp drives within the Nexus made them easy targets to the superior technology of the Necron. It is reported that the Silent King himself graced a number of the battlefields within the Segmentum. Wherever he fought, only a handful of survivors escaped with their lives. As the embodiment of Necron honor, the Silent King offered kindness to our brave Crusaders. The choice of surrender or destruction. Perhaps they should have accepted, but perhaps cloaked in the Emperor's faith they could win out the day. Perhaps it would be heretical for me to say, for a Xenos, the Silent King demonstrates great honor. In his swift but destructive dealings with humanity, he always offered a chance for surrender before a battle. This cannot be said for humanity's dealings with other species. When rejected, his reply is swift. Destruction reigns upon his foes. It is told upon Vordredis, he cast down the walls of Forge Primus with a wave of his hand. On Foyudelis, he faced down a warlord titan in Dementor, rising to face the Princeps before unleashing a beam of cosmic power that sundered the god engine in two. For all his might, however, he still offers life. Reports say Lord Regent of the Imperium Neolus, Dante of the Blood Angels, treated with the Silent King. Imperial Inquisitors assigned to investigate the occasion upon hearing of the chance meeting of the Chapter Master and Sarek. Dante formally reported that the Necron stood taller than all the rest, his mechanical body wrought more finely than any Xenos artifice Dante had ever seen upon the field. Where Necrons were skeletal, the Silent King was lithe. His movement possessed a vitality of life. Whispers among historians report that the Silent King bade Dante welcome, wearing a golden mask fashioned into the likeness of our Lord Sanguinius. Perhaps a stratagem to manipulate the Blood Angel's master, or perhaps true, that the great lord of the Necrons treated with the great angel, for who else among the Emperor's sons would consider such a thing? And yet it worked. The forces of Dante and the Silent Kings fought alongside one another. The alliance forged between the Silent King and Dante bore fruit on the battlefields, as the Necron legions and the Blood Angels fought side by side against the encroaching Hive fleets. Their combined forces unleashed devastating salvos and coordinated strikes challenging the Terranids in ways they had not anticipated. When the throes of battle were ended, the Necrons retreated. The Silent King's accord was fulfilled, and his forces left without a word. Brethren, the meeting between the Silent King and Dante of the Blood Angels speaks volumes of the potential for unity amidst the chaos of the galaxy. It serves as a testament that ancient enmities can be set aside when faced with a common and dire threat. However, one cannot ignore that perhaps in the enormity of this ancient being's wisdom, we are pawns upon a board, that Zarek moves on a whim of his great plan. For who can understand a Xenos mind? Colleagues, the tale of the Silent King is one of redemption and sacrifice. It serves as a reminder that even the most powerful beings can recognize their past misdeeds and strive to correct them, and attempt to once again lift up his race as the Emperor lifts up humanity. In the face of Xenos, heretics and chaos, we must remain united and resolute. Our Imperium stands as a beacon of light amidst the encroaching darkness. We must hunt down the Xenos with unwavering determination, root out the heretics with unwavering zeal, and defy the temptations of chaos with unwavering faith. Let us, brethren, rise to the challenges that beset us. Let us study the lessons of the past, unearth the hidden knowledge, and fortify our minds against the temptations of corruption. Together, we shall defend the Emperor's realm, for we are the sword and shield of humanity.